are talking about personal retreat in this session, I would uh, request that you also consult some of our series on other topics. Uh, I want to define personal retreat as a period a believer sets himself or herself apart with the Lord in prayer, in meditation, in searching the scripture, in spiritual exercises to strengthen his faith in God, to obtain answers for certain issues and pressing matters of life and to find direction to lead in terms, in terms of difficulty. This retreat is essential to every child of God because that is the time one shuts out the world and all the multitude of businesses that come with the society is a time of quietening of spirit. It's a time that one meditates over life. The benefits are enormous. It gives one's, one access to the secret place of the Most High God. It accords one the benefits of hearing God more clearly, more distinctly in issues that are present. It's a time that one uh, has this quietude and solitude that is required to hear God expressly in matters of concern. I want to cite some scriptural verses that support personal retreat. Psalm 25 verse 3 says, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress without cause. So waiting on the Lord is essential to garner some spiritual strength that will keep a man in days of shame, in the tame days of trouble when others are falling. The strength of a man is increased and beefed up. And so the scripture becomes correct that says, when they say there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up. Psalm 37 verse 9 also says, For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And so waiting upon the Lord confers the status of heritage and inheritance upon the waiter. It's one of the benefits you derive from waiting upon the Lord that you receive your inheritance of the Lord. Isaiah 8, 17 says, And I will wait upon the Lord that hided his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Sometimes it looks like the face of God is hidden. It looks like there is no light. There is darkness pervading the whole environment. There is no spiritual light as when the people are groping in darkness, not knowing what duration to take. Personal retreat can usher a man into a light that illuminates his path and he will find, he will see more clearly to walk the walk of life. Also in Isaiah 431, which is a very popular scripture that most believers quote oftentimes, the day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. We see here obviously that a waiting upon the Lord in retreat, personal retreat can renew the strength of a man that can re-energize your walk with God, can imbue you with strength to face the stormy weather and to brace up to every every storm of life and every pressures that will come your way 
as a believer, then you garner strength and you get well equipped for your walk with God and the walk ahead. Uh, Hosea 12, 6 also talks about, he says, Therefore, turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. Now, that spells the, uh, the issue of how to retreat. He says, continually, continually. And I want to define the word continually. It's, it's, it didn't say continuously. If it's continuously, that means there is no break. You must keep waiting now every second, every moment. But continually means intermittently, from time to time, at intervals. Make our time to uh, retreat personally and have a closer chat with God. Finally, Zephaniah 3, 8 says, Therefore wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prayer. Wait upon me. That's God now giving a command that one should wait. Definitely in retreating, you want to get closer to God. And these are the parameters and the avenues to which that essentially is achieved. It is in studying the Word of God, you get the mind of God. It is in prayers, you communicate with God. You get answers to bugging issues. You, you get light on your path. You get His voice to direct. It is also in uh, in the fasting that you spiritually tune yourself up, tune your spiritual antenna up, demean the flesh, and, uh, and embolden and energize the spirit, you know, to be more actively connected to God in the place of retreat. Essentially, that is not what makes one more righteous, but it can lead to getting more righteous. There is not even the need to do that comparison because the scripture has warned us not to compare ourselves with ourselves. He said, those who do that, they are not wise. You are not retreating for others. You are retreating for yourself. And the reason why you are retreating is not to show that you are more righteous than others. You are retreating to help yourself. You are retreating to build yourself up. You are retreating to have a closer walk and get more connected with God, your maker. That is the essence of retreat, not for comparison. Personal retreats must not be done at mountains. They can be done in the valleys too. Personal retreats essentially are done in places where you are cut off from every form of distraction, everyday life distractions family distractions, uh, workplace distractions, colleagues and all those, including friends and every other acquaintances that you have. You're, try to, you're trying to shut them out so that you would concentrate and have a maximum you know, time of dealing with God. That is their sense. So any place and uh, any environment that accords you this facility to be cut off from the rest of things that have the ability to distract you will be useful. So it mustn't be at Mount Carmel or Mount Jericho or even Mount uh, uh, Sinai or Zion. But it could be any place that gives you that solemnness, that solemnity that is required for you to come in effectively with God without intermittent interruptions. Personal retreats are one of the ways we give attention and pay heed to the ministry and the assignments and things that we have, have with God. So. Retreat is not just for those who are poor, who can't afford three square meals. You're not going on retreat for hunger strike. It's not hunger strike. 
retreat is a means of drawing close to God, not necessarily uh, because you don't have money to feed for a week or more or less. And then you resort to retreat. If the essence of retreating is to fill up the gap for lack of money or lack of food, then the, it is defeated. It has no meaning. It is senseless. The hunger, the passion that drives a man to retreat is that understanding that I am not sufficient of my own. It is the human face because every believer has four faces. The face of the eagle, the face of a lion, the face of the ox and the face of a man. The face of a man is what drives you to retreat. You understand that I'm not sufficient in myself. I cannot help myself. I needed to reconnect to my source to get that which is necessary for the journey ahead of me. So that is the reason for retreat. Of young ministers, not just young alone, for every minister who aspires to get more out of God, to get more of God. The issue of retreat should be one such exercise that they must personally engage from time to time to refill and recharge and to get themselves more focused on what God possibly is telling them to do and directing them to carry out for him. Because in times of retreat, one is given to more leveraged, to more keenness at hearing God and being able to get focused and purpose for the journey ahead of it. Let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for all our listeners, every child of God, every believer who God has laid in his heart to follow him, whom the Lord has taken by the hand in the journey of faith. I pray that your faith will, your faith will not fail you. Your, your strength will be renewed like the eagle as you retreat, as you go in search of the depths of God. May the fountains of his knowledge, of wisdom, of understanding, grace be opened unto you. May you find his face and may his countenance shine upon you. May your strength not be little. May you mount up with wings like eagle, soaring and not being tired. You run and you will never faint. I pray for you that the grace of God will lift you up and place you at higher pedestals of life and walk with God. And may the name of the Lord be glorified in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.